Hey everyone, Fire here, and today we're going to be talking about hated maps. Earlier today, GGG previewed one of the new Atlas keystones coming next patch, that being Shadow Shaping. Now, the way this keystone works is that it's going to turn your favoriting map system into hated maps. You can select maps to never show up anymore. This does come at the cost of having access to favored maps, but we'll talk a bit about that later. And one of the other things that it does is that it's going to allow maps to roll with a special implicit modifier for each different map you've favored or rather hated and this is what that's going to look like so area contains an additional legion encounter on this coral ruins map now these implicits were actually introduced in the last patch via the kirak shop window however we're going to talk about why this part probably doesn't matter and isn't very important the way I see a lot of people using this is hating on maps in conjunction with unsocketing void stones to end up with a very narrow and optimized map pool so if you only have one void stone in you're going to have 19 tier 16 maps and then you can hate 12 of those in order to only drop seven of them the problem is you don't get to pick which of those 19 maps you end up with when you put one void stone into the atlas device you end up with 19 maps depending on how on how ggg have set up the atlas and this is the first problem the second problem is that you lose access to map equity so map equity is basically the system that tries to drop a map of a lower tier but because it's not on your atlas it gives you equity which then counts towards a future higher tier map. This is why if you have all four of your void stones in, you will notice you're getting a lot more tier 16 drops than if you didn't have four void stones in. So the difference between three and four void stones is getting quite a few more tier 16 drops. On one hand, if you're doing heavy juicing strats where the maps are dropping enough maps to sustain your tier 16 map pool despite inherently dropping less tier 16 maps, this is probably going to work out for you. You're even going to have some maps dropping with these special implicits, which may in certain niche situations be valuable to you. However, this means that all of the casuals that are currently pogging out on the Reddit thread really excited about a hated map system aren't actually going to benefit from this system they're going to be harmed by it because they're going to be giving up access to their favorited maps in order to screw over their map sustain and their map pool i think it's reasonable that a lot of these people once they realize they are harming themselves by taking shadow shaping they're probably going to have all four void stones in and simply use it to cut the 12 worst maps out of 88 now some people do like having a lot of map variety they don't like running the same map over and over the way we do and so the idea of having 88 pretty good maps you know at least we're not running the 12 worst maps sounds pretty appealing to these guys they're going to be cutting out things like belfry and lava lake i presume and they're going to have a pool of maps that they can tolerate the, there are a lot of problems with this and we're going to go into that shortly the last thing i wanted to talk about before we move on however is that the map implicits that are being introduced here they came in last patch and they had absolutely no impact on the metagame whatsoever the big problem with these is that they are already pretty niche so getting one extra legion monolith is only going to be useful if you're doing legion strats but the problem is that this implicit is probably on a map that people don't want to run it may be on lower tier maps there's no way if you are farming legion that you can bulk buy maps with these implicits now maybe this system might change that but what we're going to get into soon is how i don't think this system is good enough to use for a lot of people and so if not a lot of people are using it you're still going to see the problem where not a lot of these maps with these implicits are going to exist and if they don't exist in large enough quantities it, they may as well not exist at all so all in all i think that if you're even just watching this video already shadow shaping probably isn't for you because you're a good enough player to know better than to use it but you're also not a good enough player to identify the very niche one in a thousand strategies that are going to benefit from having a very specific map pool based on the way gg ggg shuffle the atlas for a particular strategy that is not meta so I'm not going to spend too long on this one. This is just a table that shows you how many tier 16 maps you're going to have access to under various conditions. So the standard column shows you how things would be on Arch Nemesis patch. The shadow shaping column is going to show you what it's going to be like if you take the shadow shaping keystone and then singular focus is that new keystone that was introduced that gives you 200% more chance to drop favored maps, but non-favored maps no longer show up and are just converted to currency. Now for this example, we're going to assume that out of the 100 maps that GGG chooses, you have 12 that you really like, you have 12 that you hate, and those 12 respectively are going to be the ones that you hate or favor in various systems. And we're going to have a look at how the drop chances are affected by different keystones. So on the Arch Nemesis patch, or rather by not taking any of the new keystones, you're going to have a 57, almost a 58% chance to drop a favored map. You're going to have a 52% chance to drop a non-favored map. And then out of all those maps, you're going to have almost a 6% chance to drop a, a hated map. Now, keep in mind, these percentages don't add to 100%. So the hated maps can also be a non-favored map. 
Now, out of 100 map drops, 58 of them are going to be favored, 42 of them are going to be unfavored, and 6 of those 42 will be hated. On the other hand, if you look at Singular Focus, you have a much higher total map weight. You have an 80% chance to drop favored maps, but you have a 0% chance to drop unfavored and hated maps. And out of 100 regular map drops, you're only going to actually drop 80 maps. So 20 maps are just going to be completely deleted and converted to currency, but... Of those 80 maps that you drop, they're all going to be favored maps. So this is really good if you have 12 maps that you really like, because you're only reducing your map sustain by 20% and in turn only getting maps you want. On the other hand, if we use shadow shaping, we end up in a situation where we only have a 14% chance almost to drop a map that would have been favored, and we have an 86% chance to drop a non-favored map. Now, we do cut out the 6% chance to drop a hated map through the system since we can't drop the maps that are favorited, but I don't think the 6% chance was that big a deal that you would completely destroy your chance to drop a favorite, a favorite map. Now, if you look at out of 100 map drops, only 14 of your 100 maps are going to be favored, whereas 86 are going to be unfavored. This is only one scenario, but I have mapped out a lot of other ones, and I'm not going to spend the rest of the video going through them, but you're going to have to take my word for the fact that I don't think the math supports the idea of using shadow shaping. Shadow shaping is going to be good if you have a very, very specific reason to use it, but for the most part, I see this keystone as just an emotional choice. This is for casual players that aren't sitting out looking at spreadsheets to try and figure out how to play the game. They just know that they really, really hate maps such as Belfry and Lava Lake. They don't want to verse the Katava boss, they don't want to verse the Innocence boss, and so they just want to cut these maps from existence and they're happy running everything else. Given the amount of people that messaged me asking me pretty much how to farm a Mage Blood early in the league, over the next few days I'm going to be releasing a three-part series that goes over the three strategies I think are best for people to farm a Mage Blood that aren't going to be ruined by me making videos on them. So stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed this video, give me a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys soon.